What's up, everybody? You are listening to Metalocity. We are live and loud right here for the next eh, two hours and 45 minutes because we had a little bit of a late start due to some technical issues. Yeah. My bad. Again. Yeah, as always. Actually, <laughs> again, we don't even need to fucking imply that. Hey, you know what we could have done? I'll tell you off air. <laughs> I don't want to bag on you on air. <laughs> Indeed, I appreciate that. <laughs> So what's up, man? Oh, heat stroke. That was awesome. It was ridiculously hot. Ridiculous magoon hot. Aren't you glad you don't you're not in Arizona? Or, or in Afghanistan. New Mexico? <laughs> yeah, Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah, I'm kinda stoked on that. <laughs> no, what's going on with you? Nothing, dude. Fucking nothing. Jealous. Everything and their fucking problems are all dumping on my front doorstep. That's not to say that I don't have problems. It's just I don't care about them. You got 99 problems, but a big the sec- one. The secret to my success lately is not giving a damn because, you know, nothing I can do, well, nothing I, I can feel, I should say, will change the situation. So I just don't feel anything about any situation. You just don't feel anymore? That's right. That's Why a good way to think about up? it. That's a good way yeah. to think about it. Be indifferent, dude. There's no good or bad. There's just different. You're a realist. <laughs> You're not a pessimist. Well, you You're know what? A- that that philosophy helps me not get beat or not get pissed off as often about when shit doesn't go right. I didn't say I was getting pissed off about it. Oh, you love being out in the sweltering sun? It helps with the melatonin, right? <laughs> if you have a melatonin that needs help. A melatonin deficiency? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not orange, I don't think. I never was one to be colorblind, but I know what the fuck color orange looks like, and I am not it. So I'm not sure if we have an interview coming up in like 10 minutes. We're going to have to see how that plays out. All right, then. Uh, Did we even introduce ourselves? That doesn't fucking matter who we are, dude. You're just listening to Metalocity. That's all that matters. That's very true. Just kidding. I'm, uh... The guy who doesn't give a damn. I'm the idiot who likes sweltering heat. And there you go. <laughs> it's going to be a hell of a show. <laughs> Take that, America. I'm already in a bad mood. I can't wait to talk shit about some issues. Look, right off the bat, I have a fucking dumbass story right here. Oh, the Lars story about... No. <laughs> it was... Uh... Well, you know, if I should ever load. There it is. Well, you see how I did that there? Because we started late... Let's go ahead and cut in some metal. That way we can make sure we're on time in case our interview pans out. All right. Listen, listen to some We already metal? listened to that one. Did we? Yes, we did. That's weird. Why the fuck is that in there anyway? Let's listen to this instead. Ah. What's up, everybody? We are back. You are listening to Metalocity. We are here rocking out for the next hour and a half, and you know we'll see if our 7:30 band shows up. We have some technical dis- uh, issues. I think we might have worked through them. So I think so. I sent out a notification, but who knows? Maybe that notification didn't go through yet. Never can tell. We'll just have to wait and see. So yeah, dude. <laughs> some uh, interesting shit going on in the world. Isn't there always? I would have to say, yeah. You mean the uh, Michael Jackson cloud thing? Yeah, and you know, the inverted uh, boneless pork Pig rectums. Rec- pork rectums. Mmm, pork rectum. Finally, they're inverted and boneless. <laughs> like, hey, my pork rectum tastes like shit. What's up? <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> this tastes like poopy. Ah, oh, man. Yeah, I've just been going back. I haven't even kept up on... Uh, uh, metal news. I've been going back and archiving my shows and shit, and it's just I hear news and I'm like, did that happen? Did that happen? I know that was like months ago. That's crazy, huh? Oh, hey, look, uh, Disturbed is going back out on. Uh, they're releasing a CD, and going back out on tour. Yeah, that's disturbing, isn't it? Why would they do that? Oh, you know, they feel the need to annoy the shit out of a ton of people. I would assume. I would assume that's why 
Oh, look, and he's done with social media. <laughs> yeah, right. You'll be back. Oh, look at that. Former Megadeth members unleash active defiance. I can dig that. Not just kidding. No, it's the Slayer news. Good times. So, dude, what's up with this Hellfest? There's a bunch of people that played it, like... Was it? it was Hellfest, and then there was another one that was like... Yeah, yeah. Copenhagen. I don't know anything about these. Crazy. Lars Ulrich says Metallica accepts 1 in 20 approaches by bands for commercial deals. <laughs> they count out like 20 things, and they're like, just pick one. And do it over again? How's that work? Sorry, I'm, I'm like working through some technical issues. Oh, hey, look at this. We got a call. Hello, you are on air with the Dude is Piece of Metal. Hey, yeah, this is Chad and Carol from Karen the Damn Band. Nice. Hey, how's it going? How are you? We're good. How are good, you? Good, how are you? Doing good? good, doing good. Thank you. Excellent. So we just heard one of your tracks off the uh, off the CD. I believe that was a self-titled track. Feels so right. Oh, no. oh yeah, all in the dark. All in no, the dark. Sorry. <laughs> My bad. Alone in the yeah. dark must be the one oh. coming up then. Oh, cool, yeah. cool. Um, so you guys are based out of where? San Antonio. San Antonio. Oh, cool. Right San on. San Antonio, Texas, yeah. And uh, who are we speaking with, and what do, they, what do you do in the band there? I am Kara, and I am the lead singer. And this is Chad. Uh, I'm the producer, and I play guitar in the band as well. Nice. Nice. Um, your guys' uh, you guys' approach, you know, like, metal, hard rock into uh, almost operatic singing is very uh, very cool some party music oh thank you so much thank you how do you guys uh, yeah we're tra- go ahead oh no go ahead I'll uh, add on it later I was just trying we to we had some out. technical issues earlier so we're kind of fumbling around through some stuff so sorry about the delay oh it's okay. all good <laughs> but fortunately we were able to make the interview happen so if we can get it <laughs> So Sweet. How, how, long, how long you guys been together? We're pulling up your information still. Sorry. Uh, we've been we've been together about um, a year, maybe a little over a year. Nice. You guys developed the sound that, that quickly, huh? Was it a natural? Well, no. We were in stu- we were in studio for about a year trying to figure out what we were going to do, and then as far as performing out live and stuff like that, it's been a little over a year. But really, we're probably two years deep in the project. But as far as like coming out it's been about a little over a year nice nice was it easy for you guys to form your sound as in you know where the singing would be and how dramatic and all that no it's uh honestly it was a really big process because we started out we were thinking about you know doing country rock type thing and we messed around with it for a while and then we just said you know this really isn't us and uh we when we uh when we got on stage is when we really found out what we were all about. When we started doing our covers of Judas Priest, Pat Benatar, it's just kind of like sure. it was in our blood to um, do rock music. Just made sense. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Cool. Definitely. It's where the love is. Yes. Sorry about that. I'm just trying to shut down windows and stuff in my computer. and It's going real slow. Oh, you're good. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, we emailed uh, the promoter, but it was t- too late. But we were able to like, get it up. Now we're just trying to get everything working. Uh, cool. You should go to Mac. You wouldn't have that problem. <laughs> you know, I have a I Mac sitting a here right next to me, but unfortunately, <laughs> the, the operating system that this software has to work on has to be Windows. The Mac version sucks. There's actually a program that, that sucks for Mac. Really, I know. I you was know, I, myself. I quit. I quit PC in probably oh, oh 
eight. I Kicked it like a bad habit, huh? Yeah, because it was like I was working on a session studio. And my session crashed like four times in a row, and I just said, F it. And I went and financed a new uh, Mac. And it was just like, and I haven't looked back since. For sure. I do all my recording with that, too. So... You, you say you guys were in the studio for a year before you came out with your CD, right? Uh, you guys have any plans oh, yeah. on, on touring? Yeah, we're we're still exploring how about to go about doing that and, and who to do it with and and so forth. Because you know, it's it's one thing to say you're going to go tour, and it's another thing to to finance the tour, and um, um, so that's making sure everybody gets paid enough and to good to do everything and, you know, cover expenses and so forth is, is uh, not an easy thing to do these days. Not, it's, it was a lot easier, you know, a decade or two ago. Now it's like, this is, it's just not as easy and clubs don't want to pay as much and you got a lot of these pay-to-play places and it's like, I just don't believe in that. Dude, <laughs> and that can so, be tough. Pay-to-play is tough. Yeah, it's like I really don't believe believe in that because, um, you know, we're we're professionals and we put a lot of time and effort into our craft just as much as an electrician or plumber does, and, and they charge for their their services, you know. And and we're entertainers and and we're very good at it, and uh, um, so it's like you get what you pay for type thing. For sure. So I take it you're not an advocate of people downloading music, which you know is a big problem nowadays. And yeah, well, it's funny because we released our album, and then it was like we we were Google searching it, you know, a couple of days after it was released, and we found like three or four sites where you could just get it for free. I was like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> yeah. But it's like, but it's like it is what it is at this point. So uh, that genie is out of the bottle. So you're gonna just have to work your way around it. And, and I suppose the on. Un- the flip side, if the, even if people are downloading it, it maybe you know they're listening to it, so that's cool. And maybe they're going to introduce it to somebody else who's going to be into it, who might you know go out and purchase the, the album to support the band and stuff. So there's a lot of fans out there who do like to support bands that you know they believe in. But at the same time, there's a lot of people who just want something for nothing too. So yeah, yeah, and you know, and it's like so, and we knew that going in, um, and. You know, we're trying to just spread the word, and uh, if this is what it takes to spread the word, it is what it takes, you know, and, and um, we'll just deal with it uh, as we go and keep playing along. Right. So, the damn band came from Dramatic, Amazing, Mesmerizing? Yes. Yes? Okay. And um, you guys employ a lot of stage, stage pres- uh, presence and stage... Uh, Theatrics. Oh, cool. What could we expect to see in as far as a stage show? Oh, man. Uh, exactly what, what Dan stands for. Um, there's constant... The, the crowd can't take their eyes away because there's constant movement on and off the stage. Um, what I like to do is involve the audience as much as possible. So That's when, cool. we're doing one of my, when we're doing one of my originals or a cover, I always like to come down off the stage and surprise the audience, and I'll sit down at a table with them, and I'll look right into their eyes, and I'll sing them a song. And, um, you know, it involves them more. It feels like they're part of the show. It's kind of like being at a Vegas show, you know, when you're just when you're sitting there and you get you get that goosebump feeling that you're really like experiencing this epic moment. So, right, very cool. All right, over there. It's Bye. fun calling people out too. You know, putting people in the spot. It's fun. And you know, I'm a big fan <laughs> of stage shows. When I go to a show, you know, there's a lot of bands. I don't want to say, you know. But you know they they they're there they're performing and that's cool they're talented but there's nothing you know going on that keeps you enthralled in the in the show itself. So I can right I can right a lot that. of the yeah a lot of the entertainers nowadays well I wouldn't even call them entertainers but the artists will just stand on stage and and um, they'll have lyrics in front of them or cup stands on their mic stands yeah, and that's the worst you know I just yeah it is I just I mean it just gets a bad taste in my mouth so. You know, I, I want to see, I want, when I think of a show, um, you think I of think of a Vegas huh? show. Yeah, exactly. Entertainment, 80s, 
you know, just Theat- laying it all out there. Yeah, it, theatrics. It, it, there should be a theatrical value to your show, and uh, you should not be background noise. That's one thing that we, we decided early on, that we were not going to be background noise in a club or venue or anything. We were going to make I say, hey, you better be watching us because you're going to miss out if you don't. Right. And as well, you, you guys aren't background noise or foreground noise for each other as far as the singing and music goes as well. I mean, you guys have a nice balance to it. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah, we. I I like to make the set list to where, you know, there's some songs where I'm up on stage and everybody can kind of chill out in the crowd and have a few drinks. But then as the night progresses on and on, it'll get harder and harder where I, where I really interact with the audience and then... You know, we'll be doing some 80s moves on stage, and um, uh, it's just, it's constant interaction, and if people are still there at the end of the night cheering for us, and, and more people come in the door as the night goes on, I know we're doing our job, so. Nice. So so what is some of your background as, as a vocalist? Where, where did you come from that leads you where you are today? Well, I'm from San Antonio, uh, Texas, and I just, um, I've always had a sing ever since I was little, and uh, it's so funny because I started doing, like, talent shows and stuff when I was little, just like every kid would, and my mom put me in a lot of theater um, classes and um, try out for, like, the sound of music and stuff, and, right. and then I got into a sports background which took 16 years. I was an um, uh, all-state softball pitcher, tried out for the Olympics in 2006. There you go. But um, Yeah, That's but awesome. during that time, yeah, during that time, I was still singing, like, at my house, and I'd put on plays, like, at for parties with my family, and I'd invite 50 to 100 people over, and I would dress up as characters from a Broadway show, and I'd, like, and I'd recite the whole Broadway show, playing each character, and... So it's just kind of always been in my blood. Natural and then when attitude. Chad saw me, yeah, I mean, and then when Chad saw me, he he built me to where I am today as far as um, he knew my range could be a lot better. And we worked for three months in the studio before we made our album uh, to really get my voice to where it is today. So. Do you have to do a lot of show uh, pre-prep for your voice? You know, I'll, uh, yeah, there's certain things that that I do that works for me. You know, every singer is different because every the voice actually is like fifty percent uh, voice box and fifty fifty percent um, sinuses actually, and that's kind of how you stay in pocket. That's where your pocket voice is, where a singer is most comfortable. So every singer has their own warm up style before a show. What I usually do is. Um, I'll do scales, or I'll, I'll start humming, and I do this little crackling thing with my voice to get it to warm up correctly, and, um, because you never want to just go in and just, like, start yelling right off the bat, because that can harm your vocal cords, so I have my routine that I do before a show that gets me warmed up. Yeah, that was going to be my question, but, uh, do you guys, uh, adhere to any kind of, like, rituals or, uh, or superstitions? Hmm, you know, um, let's see. Well, this is pretty funny. Before each show, I'll get my whole set list, and I'll write down right beside each song just a couple of words of the song. Right before, you know, just like an hour before I go on stage, and that kind of gets my mind warmed up for stage. And then everybody kind of does their own thing. I don't know, Chad, Chad, you tell them what you do. What I do is I set up the entire show, and I never have enough time to get ready. <laughs> so, so the first set, the first set, I'm catching uh, catching my breath, and then I can really start to enjoy myself the second set. But it's just there's a lot of work that goes into setting up a show, and um, you know it's just never there's never enough time. And sometimes we'll get there to where I get an hour before a show. That's really nice where I can get my mind right. But it's just a matter of getting into getting into character. And um, it's because it is a different character. It's uh, uh, and that's I think that's where the, the lost art is with a lot of other performers is that they, they don't develop their stage character, and so they just 
they're just kind of there. And it's just like, you know, people, you know, that's a place to go out and, and perform and, and, and put on an act. I mean, because, you know, we're actors as well as uh, musicians because you're say, acting out. It's, there's a difference you know, you're acting the, out the music. music. Musician and entertainer sometimes. You know, sometimes you can be the greatest yeah. musician, but not the greatest entertainer, which could really hold you back. Like you're saying, you know, you got to have a kind of an all package deal. Right. You have to go out and put on a show and you got to just bring out the emotion. And uh, that's another thing that a lot of musicians, there's a lot of musicians out there that, that play that lack emotion in their playing. And it's like, there's a big difference when if you're just playing a note or if you're playing a note. Like, <laughs> playing in the no, yeah, you know, and it's just like, um, and that's where uh, we're very careful. I always like preach that all the time: emotion, 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 emotion. Because music is an emotion. You're trying to convey an emotion to Definitely. your audience. Definitely. So it's like you have to portray that out as well with your performance on stage. So it's like you're just selling an emotion. Every song is a new emotion, new emotion. Yeah, it's a, it and, literally uh, is a mood changer, no matter what. I mean, if you're in a bad mood, it can put you in a good mood. Well, did you guys uh, see the study that listening to heavy metal actually makes you calmer? Oh, yes, I did. I saw that. That was very there you interesting. Go. So on a Sunday yes, morning, I throw definitely. on some Slayer. I'm, you know, I'm in a Zen There you go, man. <laughs> well, if you think about it, I mean, it is. I mean, it's like... I, just, I don't know if Slayer falls into that same thing, but... <laughs> They're metal, but uh, you know I know Slayer's. I always like get angry when I not angry, but it's like I get edgy when I listen to Slayer. Um, you know, I would have to say that uh, metal, heavy metal, has probably saved me a good twenty-five to life from not killing some motherfuckers out there. You know, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can just headbang in the car, like when you're listening to it, and just bring out all your like anger on your steering wheel. Right, get all your it. aggression <laughs> out at once, huh? By the time you get to your destination, you're too burned out to actually do something, huh? Well, yeah, yeah exactly. Tired. There you go. Ooh, there I you go. And you're I'm like, not yes. going to kick that dude's ass. I was going to come over here and get crazy, <laughs> but my neck is fucking killing me. <laughs> yeah, there was yeah, a Godsmack so song, uh, get, go, get, go Away. Is that, that, that's the song? Right. I remember, that's like that's yeah. my go-to song when I'm really pissed at people, because it's just like, that's a great song to get out your emotions when you're, like, hating people. That's a great song for that. <laughs> for sure. I, I'm a, I like God Smack. Those guys are talented. Yeah, I like. I personally like yeah. Pantera. Pantera is a good aggressive, you know, just like... Yeah. Yeah, they are. Like five minutes alone. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't have an actual favorite favorite. I just listen to everything and... and uh, I was going to say this, so what are some of your influences as a guitar player? It goes way back. I mean, I think I started with Judas Priest, but I went through that whole 80s uh, hair metal, and then Metallica, and Megadeth, and I got into Slayer a little bit, but it wasn't like, like my go-to. It was more like... Um, like Metallica is Justice for All album is probably like my favorite all-time album. Um and uh Justice for all you um, say? I believe we do have yeah. more songs in the playlist tonight. You know what? Actually yeah. uh, uh, that that was one of my favorite albums as well by Metallica. Yeah, I guess there was a Yeah, it was Go ahead. Yeah, no, that was just I thought that that was their best um writing that they did. I mean the black album was the biggest seller and you know, I really appreciate the black album, but it was like you know, that was very commercial and, and you know and you gotta give it to them because they really opened the door to metal for a lot of bands from the black album. For sure. And uh and uh so a lot of people hated on it for it, but they really did the favor for a lot of it opened the eyes to a lot of people to metal. I think and, uh, some uh, of the problems that people have with Justice for All is you, no bass. Bass. Yeah. But there's a compilation online called And Justice for Jason that people have, I think through uh, Guitar Hero or something like that, they basically recorded, because you can play bass in that, you, they recorded the bass at a louder, louder volume and overlaid it into the And Justice for All album. So it's called And Justice for Jason. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he's a really good bass player, too. That surprises me. But... Well, it was um, that was their whipping boy at that album because Cliff Burton had died and it was their first album without Burton. Yeah, so, hey, so in that the, was a great album, though for sure. In oh, the yeah. few minutes we have left, 
if people want to learn more about you and be able to get some check out some of your music, what's the best way for them to do that? You got a website that people can visit? Yeah, you can visit us at www.caraandthebambam.com. And then uh, we also have a um, Facebook page. If you just go to Kara and the Bam Band on there, you can find me. And you can find my personal page, which is Kara Stevens. And I put a lot of uh, pictures and, and posters up from our upcoming shows on, on those, too. So, um, But those are the two places that you can catch all our material. Cool. Kara and the Damn Band. Spelled D-A-M. Yes. Yeah. D-A-M, yeah. It's D-A-M, and um, yeah, everything should pop up. And there's all the links to the social media sites are all on the website as well. So if you just go there, you can pretty much go to most of our social media. Or if you just Google Karen and Dan Band, there's a, a lot of stuff there <laughs> that you can just go through. Excellent. In the uh, closing moments of the interview here, uh, can we get you guys to do a station ID for us or a... a a show ID? Sure. Yeah. All right, go ahead. We'll just record it. All right. Uh, Kara? <laughs> just something like, <laughs> this is, uh, the, Kara, you know, your the name, me- you're listening to Metalocity. You're in the metal, metal, yeah. Is this the Metalocity or Metalocity radio show? Um, you know what? Either one of those will work. There you go, Kara. Let's go. Uh, hey, I'm Kara from the Bam Band. Listening to the Metal Off Radio Show. And Chad, you're supposed to introduce yourself, man. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right, let's try this again. Are we ready? Oh. Hey, I'm Kara from Kara and the Bam Band. And this is Chad, and you're listening to the Metal Off City Radio Show. Awesome. Very awesome. cool, guys. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. All right, thank you. All right, so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and check it out some right about now. We thank you very much for taking the time out to um, hang out with us during the show, and we hope to hear from you soon. All, All right, right, great. Thank you. All right, thank you, guys, you all so much. Have a good one. All right. Bye-bye. How are you, you doing? What was that? <laughs> I didn't catch that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, wait till you see a couple of the other ones that I got lined up. Nice. <laughs> you mean we're smoking dog shit, man? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's what it was, but <laughs> you never know. Things could have gone horribly right or horribly wrong on that, I guess. So, Glenn Danzig turned 60,000, okay, just say, to throw that on there. So. Father Time? It was, you know, horrible seeing him with the... Um, Cat litter? No, the makeup oh. for uh, the skull mask thing. Oh, the misfits? misfits? Yeah. It was horrible? It was all haggard and shit. Well, dude, he's all haggard. But I love how they get, like, the most embarrassing picture of the guy. And then put, t- put a picture or a story next to it. <clears throat> that makes it seem so much more legit. So I was just looking at this story that uh, says former Megadeth members unleashed debut act of defiance video throwback, and it's uh, former Megadeth members Sean Drover, Chris Broderick, and uh, Henry Derek Bonner. Bonner's with two ends, Boner's with one, right? <laughs> And Shadows Falls, uh, Matt Blanchard on bass. No Mensa, huh? No, this is the one that um, the drummer and guitar player ditched out of Megadeth to be in. Oh, 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 oh. Dude from Scar the Martyr and Shadows Falls, Matt Bakkend? B-A-C-H-A-N-D? Bakkend? They must feel pretty fucking confident, huh? They're like, later, Megadeth, we're going to be in this band. Birth and the Burial which will be released on August 21st. Metal Blade. Oh, by renowned director Corey Soria of Danzig fame. Yeesh, what is all this Danzig stuff coming up lately? I don't know. Maybe there's going to be like another Metallic album that features a bunch of Danzig crap on there. <laughs> a 
Glenn Danzig fucking get together with Metallica to put out a new album? Holy crap. Don't even give him any ideas, huh? It'd be their Glee Glee instead of Lulu. <laughs> Glenn Danzig. Dan Dan. <laughs> or would it be Zig Zig instead of Zig Zag? What do you think, unnamed source? Dan Dan? Or, Z- or <laughs> Zig Zig? <laughs> Unnamed source is busy reading about a cop who's spilling all his dirty secrets. <laughs> My bad, but I got to interrupt for this question. Is that right? Corrupt cop? No, I'm done with that. Oh, that's old he's news over, now? He's over that. That's old hack, dude. Something entertaining and metal, but metal's just not metal anymore. Metal's not metal anymore. All right, Gene Simmons. <laughs> Damn. Speaking of Gene Simmons. Speaking of Gene Simmons, Simmons all this... Metal? What's that? Was he ever fucking metal? <laughs> his outfit was... Uh, she was rock and roll all night. Not fucking metal. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, but you know, I mean... I'm sure if they had a different terminology back when that song came out, they would have considered themselves metal for that time. Just like Ozzy was metal for that time. You can't compare them to today's standards because... Oh, uh, yeah, if you're going in against, like, Strapping Young Lad and Led Zeppelin or, or Black right. Sabbath... Yeah, exactly. There's no contest of what's obviously fucking more... In your face metal, but that for literally for that time, like Alice Cooper was like metal. Yeah, Alice and people were like, "Oh fucking shit!" Metal, fucking guess what? I don't know. I don't know. He blew, you know, he blew fire and spit blood. Yeah, had a long ass tongue, wagged it around a bunch. Yeah, they were all about stage show and, like he said, blood flying all over. The place. Oh, you're talking about the music? Yeah, well, I mean, they lost me at Put the X in Sex, and I was never, really never was a Kiss fan to begin with. But there's a couple songs that are okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, they. I guess I liked him enough to see him in concert. <laughs> <laughs> Over Slayer and Slipknot. Yeah. When Slipknot was just breaking. <laughs> Should we tell that story or continue with the commentary? With the Nuge, right? <laughs> was it the Nuge? Mm-hmm. Is that the one? With, oh, okay. We've already told this story on air, though. But I yes, know, I, I missed the A show for a Kiss show. I went with Jukebox to see Kiss on the same night that everybody else was seeing fucking... Wasn't it one of their farewell tours? It was. <laughs> and live on forever. It was a bullshit. They meant farewell to that particular venue. It was just a <laughs> misconception, and we thought it was that the band was breaking up. Farewell to that era of the band because they're kicking yep. two of the fuckers out, and the right. other two that have been in the band since the inception are going to be you know, dictating what goes on. Prick Royales. <laughs> Wet cheese. They're the original Lars and James. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and what's more metal than that, dude? They're the hipster version of Lars and James. Yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Lars, I saw he gave some commentary. I, I didn't go in detail into it about his opinions of streaming and... Uh, let me see, where was it? I have this story where he says uh, Metallica accepts uh, one being in, in the entertainment approaches. yellow pages, as he puts it. Oh, is that, is that what he said? Yeah. Well, I guess they, they accept one in 20 approaches by brands for commercial deals. I've never seen a Kraft Mac and Cheese <laughs> Metallica version. <laughs> you know what? I might buy more Mac and Cheese if it was like Creeping Death with little metal bits in it. It was like little, you know, <laughs> electric chairs and... Little hammers. I'm surprised there's not little uh, Metallica cereal with little baby marshmallow th- versions Lady of Liberties. those things. Yep. Oh, okay. A little marshmallow chair. A marshmallow chair. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah Make it like totally Lucky did. Charms. Exactly. You know? Metallic flakes. Okay. <laughs> Metallic charms. Yeah. Metallic charms. Charmtalica. <laughs> I bet no, people would buy would that. Metalla jingle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just start putting Metalla on the front of everything, dude. Fuck it, why not? Oh, look, and you know some other Kiss stories. Metalla of Doom, ex Metallicus <laughs> guitarist <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Metalliculic uh, says Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley were always really the driving forces. I'll be damned. You mean the two dudes that have been in it from the start? It's and funny. Be in it until it, they fucking die. The two dudes who are. Still the main fucking players, or were the main players back then, too? Shocking. I'll be damned. Yeah. I'm shocked. And that look on his face in the picture, He's again, like, it's just eh. a picture. He's like, yeah, I'm guilty. I might have said some shit. 
<laughs> but now I'm going to kiss some ass. Because I got one of those long tongues like Gene Simmons, <laughs> and it's firmly implanted into Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley's rectums. Inverted boneless rectums. Damn, Lars has always got some shit to say, huh? This you is... know a website I haven't been on in a while? Putting Lars Ulrich's face on stuff. Yeah, on things or whatever. That's because he got started getting lame. <laughs> I, once I saw that one where it was implied that Dave Mustaine was reading a Playgirl magazine with Lars. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm done. Click. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Let's see. Heavy metal hard rock is something I feel in my blood. Sebastian Bach. I guess he's kind of metal. Courtney Love comes under attack while an Uber car in France. I heard about that. Motley's, Motley Crue's Vince Neil massages the meat on Celebrity Wife Swap. Jesus. Dude, would you want fucking... It could be worse. It could be Tommy Lee. You know? <laughs> and he could be actually massaging his meat. Yeah, I mean... Fuck no, dude. That's the DJ for Slipknot right there. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yep. No wonder they wear masks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, and he uh, he was on that fucking... <laughs> During the band's current European, European Summer Festival Tour. Now watch... It. The video of this, uh, in fact, did not hit a somewhat turbulent patch after the release of All Hope Is Gone. Well, yeah, it's because the dude died. Like, they fucking recorded that album, like, a year later. Not even a year later, dude died. After they went on some world tours and shit. Yeah, that sucks. And then fucking, it took, everyone was like, they'd be asking people in the press and fucking... Joey's like, yeah, we got shit written, don't worry about it, we're gonna be coming out and fucking new shit. And then they're like, well, yeah, we fired Joey. And don't worry about that shit. We'll be coming out with shit later. Like, it was really kind of weird. Ah! Wilhelm? Ain't nobody you know got time for that. You know what's funny? is I was watching a movie the other day, and sure shit, I fucking hear it. Ah! <laughs> 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 oh, look at that, dude. Glenn Danzig's Skeletons Covers album. Guess who's doing another covers album? Man, dude. this motherfucker's all over the place, isn't he? <laughs> He's like DNA to crime scene. due to this summer, a CD which was recorded with prong guitarist, vocalist Tommy Victor, former typo negative drummer Johnny Kelly. We'll include the former Misfits frontman's take on Black Sabbath songs, ZZ Top, the Trogs, and the Everly Brothers. Nobody cares about your stupid fucking take on those songs. You're just going to make them worse. Oh, that's a, uh, a, a for shame. Twisted Sisters D. Snyder says late drummer A.J. Perro has no estate plan in place <laughs> so they robbed his ass basically he Pretty didn't much. he was broke yeah oh oh look at that exhibited quote irresponsible behavior end quote by not having himself quote checked out quote for cardiovascular disease before his tragic tragic death in march died at age 55 while on tour with uh, adrenaline mob yeah oh look at that jacoby shaddix you know who that dude is? Nope. Papa Roach. Hmm. Yeah. That's who you want to punch in the face every time you hear some stupid ass song of theirs on the radio. Kind of oh. looks like a Papa Roach. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, wow. You can now watch uh video asked about the comment on Kiss bassist vocalist Gene Simmons' re uh, recent statement that rock bands would prefer not to support a new band. I bet he's like, Gene Simmons can take that long tongue of his and yeah. shove it up his own ass. He's going to be like, well, I agree to a certain extent, except for my music. Yeah. <laughs> my shit's legit. Urges music, uh, rock music fans to buy records for them from their favorite bands. Dude, there's like do. a bunch of shit bands and, and news. I'm like, here's a Nickelback story, Linkin Park story. I mean, yeah. what the fuck is going on, people? Do oh, you man. really care about these bands? Should we change our format to shit rock? <laughs> <laughs> Gene Simmons, yes, rock, quote, truly is dead, end quote. Hmm. Yeah. Well, for him it may be. You know, and his participation in it. <laughs> it was over. I don't think he ever had it. <laughs> oh, this story sickens me, dude. Megadeth collaborate with country star and 
Tease Killing is My Business 30th Anniversary Project. That sickens you too, huh? Collaborate with a country star. Uh, well, you know, at least they didn't just up and randomly just do a fucking country song like Metallica did with <laughs> Metalla Megadeth. Metalla Death? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, Lars. Yeah, look at that. Bunch of fucking shitty ass. Oh, look, it says uh, that country singer Steve Warren, or I don't even never heard of that motherfucker. What's that story at the top about, Lars? Uh, we try to align ourselves with the people who are smartest. Oh. I Not see. the dumbers. Right. So only idiots don't have Metallica records, is what he's saying. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, only idiots illegally allow users to download Metallica. Yay! He loves it when people download his shit. <laughs> he's the one that leaks the shit. Uh, he's the one who made it popular by bringing it up in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> shit, I didn't even, even knew about Napster until I heard about him complaining about it. Right? <laughs> it brought him more fucking... Uh... Thanks, Lars. Hey, that's Alice You showed Cooper me how guitarist. the art of illegal downloading. <laughs> Look at that. Alice Cooper guitarist Nita Strauss. Negative Damn. trust sparked my love of heavy metal. That's Alice Cooper's guitar player? Yep. And she shreds. Oh. I bet she does in the kitchen. She shreds a mean potato. <laughs> <laughs> shreds a mean fucking carrot. <laughs> Just using the power of her mouth. She gets a block of cheese and she's like... <laughs> Gun. Look at those buck teeth on her. She'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> Shredded, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that she, actually, she does fucking shred on the guitar. Um, let's see here. Playing role Dave Murray in the all-female Iron Maiden. Oh, she was in the Iron Maidens. Oh, really? Yes. She was Dave Murray role of Iron Maidens. Uh, Courtney Cox? Is that a funny story? The other guitar player in the Iron Maidens is my best friend, Courtney Cox. And when she originally approached me to do the Iron Maidens, I said, can I be Adrian Smith? I said, nope, I'm Adrian. I said, pass. And then a couple of years later, I went up playing in the band anyway. Uh, role of Dave Murray slash Yannick Gares. So I did a little bit of Dave and Yannick. Great time. Shit, 27 time. years ago yesterday, Pantera released Power Metal. Incidentally. Oh, dude, 27? Yeah. There you go. Fuck. Chew on that. What's up, everybody? We are back. We are listening to Metalocity Live and Loud right here for the next hour and a half-ish. So, how many uh, Iron Maidens ma fans is there out there? Two, four, six, eight, ten. I'm at least ten times a fan. You know, I never really checked out their YouTube videos before, but... They're, oh, I mean, they got some obstacles in their way. But generally, they seem like an okay band. Oh, checking out the fucking guitar, you know, because she got these massive boobs that are in the way. Right, it's gotta be tough to play when you can't see the guitar on it. <laughs> I usually have the opposite problem. My stomach pushes the guitar out so much. I'm like, I got this shit. You're playing a ukulele? <laughs> <laughs> it's a recession, man. <laughs> Me and my money are on a break. That's fucking good time. And so the other guitar player, it, what would you say her name was? Um, the blonde girl. Um, oh, shit. Where is it? Uh, Nita Strauss. Yeah, currently playing with um, Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper. Yeah. Alice she Cooper rips it up. So, who would you guys rather see in concert, Alice Cooper or Kiss? Alice, Alice Cooper. Cooper. Alice Cooper. It's you know, yeah. Kiss talks all the shit. Alice Cooper doesn't talk shit. That's another thing that makes him cool. I think he's a born again, and he plays a lot of golf. Well, you know, <laughs> to each his own. But still, he's not talking shit. You know. That was the best. Well, yeah. <laughs> that was the best response. And the thing that, that, that I like better is I didn't know that. That means he's not trying to fucking make me aware of it. And I like that even better. And his daughter's usually the one that uh, participates in the getting killed section of the theatrical stage of his show. That's his, him and his daughter. Oh, yeah. It's a family business. It's a brand, huh? Yep. And she's kind of hot. Is she going to be the next him when he's gone? I hope not, because if that's the case, then Pearl a Day is going to become the new meatloaf. 
<laughs> That's Scott Ian's wife, buddy. Scott Ian's wife has a stepfather. Uh, you know what's funny is I'm reading this story at the it's same time as you were saying that. And you said Scott Eden's wife, and I looked at this uh, thing that says 90-year-old woman. <laughs> so <laughs> I put the two together. It's like Scott Eden's 90-year-old wife. <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually not the case. She's more like 95? No, she's quite young, actually. <laughs> All right, since I'm already there. Her name is Pearl Aday. <sighs> Where? On the neck? Necklace, on the yeah, chest? Usually. Pearl necklace? <laughs> yeah. Pearl well, necklace a day? Keeps the doctors away. <laughs> Unless you're going to get that ch- shit checked for, you know, syphilis. I love that 90-year-old dude. It was actually... 90-year-old dude pulled a gun on post office employees. So you're saying that fucking... <laughs> yep. A 90-year-old man is accused of threatening U.S. postal employees when he wasn't satisfied with the service at a post office can you imagine not being satisfied with the I mean they're right up there with the DMV right you would think you love to go to the DMV in the post office you know I love to go to the DMV when I have a fucking an appointment scheduled and literally walk past all those fucking pools in line and just fucking walk up right to the window for the appointments and fucking wait maybe two minutes yeah the department of motor vehicles is the worst I don't stay that long and as long as you just throw money at them, they're fine. Hey. They're like, there's this beat, there's this beat. You're like, just shut up already. <laughs> Damn it. <Beat> <laughs> so, you said so. You got something to say there, buddy? I uh, know. Uh, lightning strike leads to Cape Coral pot arrest. Huh? In the house, bla- oh, he had uh, his house was hit by lightning, and when the fire department came, they found a huge grow room and busted him. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Shit. Dude, what is he complaining about? He just got fucking power surged like a motherfucker. His fucking shit probably got flash fried. What's he complaining about? His house just got burned down. He's going to jail for growing shit. His house burned down. The only thing that survived was his grow room. No, that it was it was all on fire. Oh, okay. But they didn't fucking. They but they weren't just in a hurry to, to use his evidence. But they weren't in a hurry to put that shit on. I'll get in a second, man. Hang on, this guy's got Doritos. Why will you not? Slayers carry king. I would have loved Here for Gary Holt to have been more involved with writing. Yep. <laughs> Uh, there was adversity during the time that we were not used to. So this picture caused somebody to... This was a prank. Uh, uh, what it is is a... It looks like a guy or that's, a That's a how person. you're supposed to leave every hotel room. Yeah, uh, in a hotel room with a phone wrapped around a neck. Well, that picture caused somebody to have a heart attack when they came in the room and saw it. Was that's it A.J. Perro? <laughs> was it Twisted Sisters drummer A.J. Perro uh, that had a heart attack? <laughs> I'm witnessing that shit. Ah! Phone cable wrapped around a makeshift neck so it looks like a body wrapped in a sheet laying on a bed. Been choked out. Yeah. <laughs> Wednesday Adams approves. Uh, Actually, have you seen like... I love like the a, caption. Next time Wednesday we check Adam out, thing. leave the bed like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how you're supposed to leave on top. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's fucking... That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Gary Holt, who recorded lead guitar parts for about half a dozen of the tracks on the album, stated uh, recording repentless, started recording repentless in March, and they're releasing it September 11th. Hmm. Only I- that for the album, Implode was completely re-recorded from the ground up, and when the stillness comes, used as an instrumental track in a Scion commercial, got a revamped intro and all new vocals. That's cool. A Ohio woman accused of driving in the buff while eating pizza was arrested for DUI. Why would you arrest her for that? Well, let's see what the picture of her is. We'll find out why they arrested her. This is usually our fun session <laughs> called Guilty or Not. Oh, come on. Show me a picture of this possible victim of the police. <laughs> victim or a vagina. Oh, come on. 
Nobody wants to see your stupid shit. Let's uh -oh. see. Oh, oh, oh. Guilty. Uh, yeah. Guilty. She, she was fucking hammered. Throw the book at her. Put the dog back in the kennel. <laughs> <laughs> Big kennel. <laughs> Just when I think I couldn't offend anymore. <laughs> Guess what? She's from Westlake. Oh, really? Ohio. Oh, <laughs> damn! That would have made it so much better. So much better. <laughs> that would have been fucking amazing. You did say Ohio to begin with. Oh my it? god! Hot unclothed man enters Walmart and douses himself with milk. <laughs> that doesn't bother. I mean, that doesn't that doesn't bother me in any way, shape, or form because it was probably he, at a wonder, Walmart. Was he yeah. doing it in slow motion? It was Walmart, yeah. <laughs> What's that? Oh Jesus Christ! Uh, I still don't get that. <laughs> Carry the troglodyte king has just announced. <laughs> Has just reached the new summit of his hypocrisy. <laughs> Ouch, man. I love reading the comments. New uh, York inmate allegedly tried to escape via 64 bedsheets from a local jail. What? Oh my god. I didn't know things like that actually happened. I'd do it. <laughs> yeah, he used 64 bed sheets tied together, enough for him to shimmy down 11 stories of a cell block to the street, officials said. Huh. How about that? Keeping it real. <laughs> Bringing it back to classics. Then he's like, they'll never see this coming. <laughs> My evil plan. He should have had a chick with long nose hair. That would have worked better. Shit. A really fucked up version of Tangled. <laughs> <laughs> Good times, man. So you're going through your whack stories now, huh? Yeah. Hey, uh, bank robber who was stopped for biscuits gets state prison. That's what you know. If you robbed a bank and you always just eat breakfast have to have, beforehand, yeah, you don't got to stop for biscuits and gravy. Or carry Everybody a fucking loves Snickers. Them. I love them, you know, but that that's not the appropriate time for them. Carry your ass <laughs> some stickers, motherfucker. Oh man. Huh? <laughs> Ooh, Please, serial, son. serial California con man arrested for three hundred thousand dollars worth of attorney scams. So beware of any attorneys out there. They're probably scam artists anyway. They're they're the scourge of the earth, right? <laughs> Unless you're winning a bunch of money, then you love your lawyer, and then you hate him when he takes a like third of it. <laughs> Good times, man. Whoa. Woman jailed for failing to return a video she rented in 2005. You what? You jailed for that shit? I, I thought it. they just charged your shit like three times the amount the movie was worth. <laughs> it was a VHS tape and... <laughs> Not many been. Of Monster in Law. <laughs> 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 Sitting in her home for a decade. Damn, that's fucking funny. <laughs> Did the cops show up with like a random search warrant and be like, yo, bitch, what's your problem? There's the VHS. Get on the fucking ground! Show me the receipt! Yeah. <laughs> show me the receipt! And since we're here, we might as well search the rest of the place. Right. <laughs> Could you be a growing operation. Oh, what do you know? She's got fucking six Colombians in there cutting yeah. goats. You're fucking contraband. You're fucked. <laughs> You're going down, cunt. Damn, harsh, huh? Whew. That is a little harsh. <laughs> How dare that's a victim of police right there. Man uh, passed out next to TV, had a package of bacon in his pocket. What's wrong with that? Uh, I don't know. Oh, Jesus Christ again. Damn. Uh, man chooses wrong false name to give to the police. <laughs> Backfired found himself locked up for a crime committed by the person he was pretending to be. <laughs> Word. You gotta commit. Whoops. <laughs> oh, dude, that's too funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess that's our cue to get into some metal. Metal. Oh 
<laughs> Alright, so we found this fun game that's floating around on Facebook. So, one of the guys from Raiju, cool band, uh, funny guy, he posted this picture, this comment of, uh, and it basically was replace one word in a movie with vagina and post the results below. And this guy got like 400 comments. So, we started going through and just on our own and putting <laughs> the word vagina in movie titles and just replacing it with a, a different word and coming up with some good stuff. Vagina Trek. Devil Wears Vagina. Devil Wears Vagina. <laughs> <laughs> vagina on Elm Street. <laughs> that was good too. Uh, <laughs> the one that had me laughing so hard right there was It's a Mad, 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 yeah. Mad Vagina. <laughs> Vagina's tail. <laughs> that was good too. <laughs> the flying vagina. <laughs> Quest for the holy vagina. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's good. Uh, vagina in smoke. <laughs> Smokey in the vagina. We could literally Smokey go on. Smokey in the vagina. 805-409-8585 if you want to call in for that shit. Yeah, actually, you know, we don't have any interviews right now, so or for the remainder of the show. So if you want to take this opportunity to call in to the Dudas Priests of Metal, now is that opportunity. Yes. If not, we'll fucking find you somehow. Oh, really? Probably like not. That? I was just throwing that out there because I wanted to sound vicious. Oh, worked. You really hurt my feelings, man. <laughs> You're a dead man, Ramsey. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah. No wonder why you guys never talk. That was that was actually a pretty funny part in that movie. Another part that was actually kind of hilarious about that movie was when uh, when he moves those dudes' racers out of the way. He's like, "Hey, you know what we're gonna do to you?" He's like, "Let me guess. You're gonna <laughs> drag me out to the desert, beat the crap out of me, leave me there for dead without any shooting." He's like, "No, man. This is the '90s. We're gonna sue you." You'll be hearing from our lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> that would be confusing as fuck to me if I was that dude. I can understand why he was freaking out. <laughs> Please get fucking brave vagina, <laughs> <laughs> vagina heart, <laughs> vagina club, yeah, vagina club. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. That's just too much, dude. Return of the vagina. <laughs> yeah. the, the vagina strikes back. <laughs> the vagina wars a new hope. Yeah. <laughs> the clone wars a new vagina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, yep. That's why, you know, that's why you listen to the show, right? We're just that funny. Nice vagina. It's, it's too bad we should just jump on this guy's Facebook thread and start posting all this shit and inundate him. We should. <laughs> With a bunch of mad, 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 mad yeah. vagina. It's a mad, 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 mad vagina. Oh, man. Vagina Max. <laughs> Holy crap. Yep. Anything else going on in the metal community? Other than um, stupid shit with fucking Nickelback and Lincoln Park and all these other fucking disturbed. So what you been up to, man? <laughs> <laughs> what have I been up to? Yeah. Uh, That's about it. I mean, you want to hear stories about Nickelback or what, dude? What? <laughs> <laughs> it's either this or we make small talk. In that case, well, I had a progress, <laughs> you know, a really positive day at work today. Made some shit happen. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That's why I get the big bucks. <laughs> That's good times, dude. Fucking success in the day world. Yep. Pete, believe it or not, this is not my only job. I know. I'm shocked you say. Yep. I actually have to make money as well as do this show. Not that's, like that's commendable not velocity thing, money, but I gotta like make some real money. If we don't get no roles, we don't get <laughs> It's a job if it feels like a job. If you're committed to doing it and you don't really want to have to do it. Is this like woman logic? Like a blow job when it feels like a job is like a job? Well, I don't know about anything about that, but. <laughs> you know, would you say that doing this show sometimes stack is, could be viewed as a job? 
Uh, it can be a little strenuous as a job. Right. Yeah, it's not necessarily a job in the sense that you get paid for. Nevertheless, well, you're still committed to doing it, though, right? Yeah. So, it therefore, it kind of is a job. Uh, yeah, I guess. Because you're obligated to do it. Unless you fucking be a pussy bitch and bow out, you know? I can only uh, tell you stories about Nickelback. <laughs> Papa Roach. Oh, Venomous Concept featuring Napalm Death. Brutal Truth member Simon. Oh, Seasons here we of go. Mist. Uh, right in between, uh, yes, Rock is truly is dead by Gene Simmons and uh, Jesus. How many times are we going to hear this? And I have a trickster story. Everybody has an opinion about Gene Simmons saying Rock is dead. Yep, fucking Rock is dead. There, let's all just agree to agree. <laughs> let's all just agree that Rock is dead and move on with our fucking lives so yeah. we can get into the metal. That's right. The passing of the torch is already done. Kiss is done. Anything he <laughs> says is past tense now. You know, what does he really know about modern shit? Is it because he doesn't like it? Therefore, Rock is dead? Yeah, where's his fucking radio show? Right. I don't see him making a difference. Let me just put it as Steve put it one time. You know what, Gene Simmons? Fuck you and your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and it might nobody about gives the a shit statement. about what you have to say. Yeah, nobody does. People would be like, oh fucking my God, lame ass bitch. I was going to put a band together, but Gene Simmons just said Rock is dead, so maybe I should be, take up pottery <laughs> oh, well, or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I t- this macrame class that I've been taking. Right. Fuck this metal band. <laughs> you know, if everybody listened to Gene Simmons, I guess we, he would be right. Gene Dumbass Simmons? Uh, I guess you trying know, to be relevant. You know, a dumb statement like that is just a, a grasp at a straw to try to get people to talk about you. That's trying to be it. relevant. Yeah. Nobody gives a fuck about Kiss when it comes down to it. Not anymore. Not really, because of all the fucking farewell tours. Lost that, credibility. Yeah, that, and they're played out. You can only hear that shit so much, and it's not like they're going to come out with a new album where you're going to be like, oh my god, this new Kiss album fucking amazes me. I must have it. Yeah, I doubt it. Unless they hire completely different members in the entire line- lineup. You if know? they did that, then I might actually buy it. All of a sudden, it's bitching and metal as fuck. You know? <laughs> Check out the new Kiss. Yeah. Right? But there is going to be no... There, come on, let's face it. As long as there is fucking heartbeat or breath right. left in that motherfucker's body, there will always be... His kiss. Unless it's mini kiss, you're probably right. Well, you know, mini kiss is a sole proprietor of themselves, <laughs> 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 completely independent of the unsigned or the uh, the signed artist. They probably had to go to a, through a huge battle to be called that, even though it was. Oh, uh, I see what you did there. <laughs> mini kiss went through a huge battle. Ah, oh, isn't that cute? <laughs> Doing my part. Oh man. Mini Kiss. I still want to see them. Can yeah. we? If they open up for Baby Metal. Oh, Mini Kiss, Baby Metal. I wouldn't go. Yeah, you would. I would not. Dude, don't even lie. You would go. If we were like, hey, man, we got some Baby Metal tickets, you'd be like, yeah, you went to worse shows. I have, but are you buying my ticket? Well, no, I'm just saying, if somebody would pre- hypothetically presented you with a ticket and said, hey, let's go to see a Baby Metal show, I happen to have a killer ticket... I'd probably go. But I wouldn't pay money for it. You'd be standing with your arms crossed the whole time like, I am not amused. I was actually <laughs> too busy covering, at one concert in particular, I was too busy covering my fucking ears because there was the sound of basically a jet engine that comes out of a girl's mouth when they scream and in unison. And it literally peaks up and matches at a certain point to where it can make you sterile. <laughs> You felt your testicles crack? I felt I felt them rattle. <laughs> there was definitely a fucking... It rustled my jimmies. <laughs> no more kids for you, huh? Yeah, well, that, that proved out to be false. <laughs> well, I guess they survived. Oh. You got Stax Army going. Disturbed really went out of their way to keep this new album a secret. I don't blame them. It's probably <laughs> false. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, they should continue to keep it a secret, in fact. A groupie demanded to use Rammstein frontman Till Lindemann as a toilet once. Wow. Why am I looking at a McRib coupon? <laughs> it's not a coupon, dude. That's the uh, product information. Oh, oh. New McRib. Deluxe. McPork's rectum sandwich. <laughs> Inverted. Inverted. Boneless. Boneless. <laughs> Thank God. Finally, we got boneless and inverted. Well, at least they cosmetic it up to look at, you know, more pleasing. 
Okay, so the uh, country... Uh, of course, I'm not eating Burger King's uh, onion rings ever again, because those are actually be rectums. Uh, that's true. Big old rings. Um, actually, I haven't been to Burger King in years. That place blows. <laughs> I guess the, uh, the country... Um, cameo on Megadeth's new album. He's just going to be playing slide guitar. Weak. Yeah. Next, it's going to be a debut of a uh, like a uh, compilation of them working together on a, some kind of project where they'll be doing like some country song with some metal riffs in it here and there. And they're going to try to Rebel meets Rebel. Yeah. Huh. That's already been done by Dime Mag and Company. Yeah, but it hasn't been done by Dave Mustaine. That's true. And you know he did uh, he did offer to have Dimebag in his band. He felt him worthy enough. Yeah. But deemed uh, Nick Menza worthier the the gig than uh, It's just two people pe- too too bad to be, nobody yeah, finds to, 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 uh, uh, Dave you. Mustaine worthy of being in Megadeth. Oh, yeah, that's true. And what if they kick his ass out? What if Dave Elson kicks Dave Mustaine out? That'd be funny. He's like, "You're out of the band, Dave." Imagine that's uncalled for. Who would they get to replace him? That'd be fucking weird. James. James Hetfield. <laughs> 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 he leaves Metallica, joins Megadeth. Oh, dude, and brings Lars with him. No, Lars isn't in that. And then, uh, so then Metallica will get Dave Mustaine to <laughs> do vocals and guitars. Megalica. That'd be fucking hilarious, dude. I think they should do that just as a publicity stunt. I think... Uh, and then put out a record. Is that, is that fodder for tyranny of tradition? Right. Dude, I wonder if he's already done something like that. An ironic twist of events. <laughs> you should totally fucking hit that dude up and be like, hey, check it out. You want something to beat the Eddie Van Halen getting kicked out of Van Halen's story? <laughs> right. <laughs> Shit, we should start our own thing. We have to write that shit out. <laughs> Along with making fucking movie posters for our fucking vagina movies. Right. Attack of the 50-foot vagina. A streetcar named Vagina. <laughs> <laughs> vagina named Desire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. The Green Vagina. Vagina Mile. <laughs> Edward Vagina Hands. <laughs> <laughs> you have now won. If there was if there was a point system or a fucking <laughs> over nine thousand right there, dude. Oh shit, it's too much. Could have fun with that all day. You have just won. The, <laughs> you win. You just win the internet right there. You win it. <laughs> I'm just gonna give it to you right now. There's, I might as well just drop this mic right here. <laughs> No, I'm sure we you. can keep it going for another. I know I could drop the mic for you, dude. <laughs> Fuck. Ah, uh, shit. That's too fucking funny. Now I'm all thinking of other movies. Right. <laughs> well, what else can fit in there? Let me think. Holiday movies. <laughs> what is that? Uh, summer vagina. Or vagina vacation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it just seems so. What, no, what's a good holiday movie? You know, something really Christmassy. National Lampoon's Vagina Vacation. <laughs> no, no, you know, something classic. National Lampoon's Christmas Vagina. <laughs> something, oh. Um, There's like an old black and white that they show every year. Miracle on Vagina Street. <laughs> vagina on 34th Street. Yeah, vagina on 34th Street. <laughs> uh, what's the other one, dude? With the, You'll shoot your eye out. Oh, um... It's a, that's a Christmas story, right? A Christmas story. A Christmas vagina? A vagina story? A vagina story. <laughs> vagina Potter in the quest. In the quest for the... <laughs> that's funny. Vagina Potter. Harry Vagina. <laughs> Harry Vagina. <laughs> that's not so funny. <laughs> like in the quest for the shaver. <laughs> <laughs> In the quest for female care products. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. We better get into hell. some metal before we beat this up too much. <laughs> beat up vagina? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> 
What's up, everybody? Ain't nobody got time for that. That you could not have sounded any whiter. Ain't nobody got time for that. Woot woot. <laughs> oh, am I already getting reprimanded? Oh no. Okay. No. I shouldn't be looking at my t- my text messages, but I couldn't help it. <laughs> oh man. Let's see what else here. Do you believe that Manson has Manson an opinion about Columbine shut down his <laughs> career? Whatever, douche. I see he's reaching that point in his career where he's becoming into the douche stage. Look at him. He looks all douchey. (laughs) Says that being accused of inspiring the perpetrators of the Columbine High School Massacre to commit killing spree really just shut down my career entirely to the point where he could not get any gigs. Lies. (laughs) 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 (
vagina of the beast. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say black vagina. <laughs> Master of vagina? Yeah. Right, the vagina. <laughs> vagina <laughs> magic? <laughs> right. <laughs> Injustice for vagina? Re vagina, <laughs> remastered, badge badge, <laughs> Lulu, garage vagina, <laughs> vagina ink. <laughs> oh, dude, anti, anti vagina superstar. <laughs> 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 Smells like vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit, that is fucked up. Oh man. Dude, we're wrong. We are fucking wrong. Oh shit. Smashing vaginas. Uh melancholy the infinite vagina. <laughs> Kara and the vagina band. Six pack of vagina. <laughs> <laughs> vagina of doom. <laughs> Far beyond vagina. Vagina dead. <laughs> <laughs> there goes our friends list. Vagina of Doom. The Vagina Born Experience. <laughs> the vagina of Doom. Oh, man. Yep. Well, that's about it, right? <laughs> vagina Dealer. <laughs> oh, fuck. Stack and steel of the vagina, vagina priests of metal. <laughs> vagina factory. <laughs> Your vagina. It's so obvious. Vagina vagina. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I didn't think of it before. A psycho vagina. We've all known a couple of those. <laughs> Been married. <laughs> Downtown vagina. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> vagina brown. <laughs> Dare I say. <laughs> Vagina Manson? B- Menza. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, you went there. Yeah. You know, if you're listening, go ahead and call 805 409 We dare you. Prove it. Yeah. We don't think you're listening, so prove us wrong. That's what I thought. See. Oh. Listen into the creak of my chair. Kosher vagina. <laughs> Vaginosity. <laughs> That's what we're going to do if this gig doesn't work out. Vagosity. Vagina steel and vagina the ripper. <laughs> it's better than stack the vagina. <laughs> I'm um, Steven Vagina, and you're stacked the vagina. <laughs> Together, we're wild vagina. <laughs> vagina and Ted's excellent adventure. Actually, it should be Bill and Vagina's excellent adventure. <laughs> uh, man, the lost vagina. <laughs> The Great Vagina of Oz. <laughs> the Wizard of Vagina. <laughs> That's an honorary title. Oh, man. Well, I'm sure we scared away all most of our listeners now. <laughs> Boobs. That'll bring some of them back, right? Yeah, if it wasn't radio, maybe. Just picture boobs. That's what we had was a picture of boobs. Gets me in trouble every time. That's weird. Isn't it? Maybe I should refresh that. Refresh your shit. 
Ah, that's a little more normal. Normal. Whatever that means. N-O-R-M-L. Isn't that the uh, National Organization for the... <laughs> it should be. Realization that, of marijuana's legalization or some shit? I hate acronyms. Don't bother me with your acronyms. But tomorrow is TGIF. <laughs> Fuck acronyms. To me, tomorrow is Friday. I'm okay with saying that. I'm comfortable using the full word. I know the English language well enough to say it. I'm gonna throw it out there. I like that one of uh, one picture. It's like Willy Wonka. He's like leaning over. It's all tell me, help, tell me. You talk like this, and it was like spelled all wrong in text speak. He was like, tell me more. As I throw a dictionary at your face. Yep, good times, man. Yeah. Lama vagina. The tyranny of vagina. <laughs> <laughs> the vagina of tyranny. The throwback vagina fest. <laughs> oh, man. Hopefully that's not the case. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, you know, when you go to the show, you know, and there's nothing but... Well, you remember. Yeah, I do. <laughs> that one particular show? <laughs> the first of two nights? <laughs> it was a Muppet. The China's in space. I wrestled a vagina once. <laughs> I wrestled a vagina once. <laughs> <laughs> Country for old vagina. <laughs> 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 Vagina in fear in, in Las Vegas. Oh, shit. The Vagina Lebowski. <laughs> 20,000 vaginas under the sea. 20,000 leagues of vagina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yep. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Vaginas. Oh, shit. Damn. The Secret of the Ooze. <laughs> oh, damn. You brought it to that level. That's fucking wrong. Oh, uh, thank you. I'm trying to win back the internet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, in the few minutes we have before we go to our Metal Masters coming up, which we have some kick-ass stuff tonight, I just want to say check us out at Metalocity.net. You can check out some of our cool pictures in the scrapbook and... Oh, do we still call it the scrapbook? I think so. Or the pictures tab, something like that. And, or you can listen to some archives of the show. We have some of our best shows archived up there for your listening pleasure. For that anybody who can't necessarily make the whole show. Well, we don't post whole shows. We just post some interviews. Um, but tonight we might post a whole shtick about vagina. <laughs> <laughs> vagina Ocity radio show. Yep. <laughs> I don't think there's one of those in existence. <laughs> you got any uh, anything you want to add to the to the, the mix? I think the, I covered all bases. The vagina bases. <laughs> Check out Kosher Vagina, Kosher Metal. Helps support the station, uh, which in turn did. helps support the show. Which in turn helps get the word out for independent metal bands, which is what this show is all about. Independent metal bands, unsigned independent artists, and uh, yep. And if you know a band, you want us to feature them on the show, have them hit us up. Metalocity.net. Yeah. You literally speak better than I do when you do that, so. I just have it down to a shtick. Yep. In my mind, I'm like, okay, hit go. <laughs> <laughs> and flips, flip the switch for autopilot. Yep, back to drool mode. Uh, now, <laughs> I'm now there with, with my mind be blank and all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking funny. Hmm, we know any other bands that we deal with uh, that we can hack on real quick? Oh, Saved by the Metal Masters, Regina Tura. Yeah. What's up, everybody? We are back for our last segment of the show. We want to just thank everybody for tuning in for the three hours of madness. Three-hour tour. 
Be sure to like our Facebook page. Tell your friends. We're on Facebook, Metalocity. We're pretty damn easy to find. We're the only Metalocity hosted by Stephen Steele and Stack the Ripper. <laughs> that narrows it down. That is true. Because we're going to keep the vagina thing going probably on our Facebook page for a while after I share that link and see how many other people we can get to participate. Right. And that way we can just sit there and post all night all of our... <laughs> All of our ingenious. All right. It shall be glorious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Good well, times, man. well, that was good times, but that's about it now. We will catch you guys next week. Yep. Same time. Same place. Later. Later. I was going to get